If you are the same as me and every other sewist around, you will at times just completely lose that motivation to sew. Your sojo. Where did it go? <laughs> In this video, I want to talk about seven ways that might help you to get your sojo back. That is that sewing motivation. <laughs> My dearest sewing friends, welcome back. It is absolutely delightful to see your smiling faces here again. Welcome. If you are actually uh, just here for the first time, well, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com. And here on this channel, we talk about everything garment sewing so you can get better at sewing your own amazing garments that you dream of. So if you haven't already, do uh, check the subscribe button. Do hit that. Uh, it lets YouTube know that you want to see more of my content and lets me know that you're liking this as well. First off, let's start here. What on earth is sojo? Particularly if you're English as a second language, you might not have ever heard this before. Sojo is sewing motivation. So uh, it's sewing mojo. Mojo comes from the movie Austin Powers, where uh, obviously the funniest movie ever made, of course, uh, where Austin loses, he's a swinging 60s character, and uh, he loses his mojo. His mojo is his spark, his essence, his passion for everything that, that he is, that zest that, that he is. That is his mojo. And so sojo is just a combination of your sewing mojo. Your motivation to sew is what we, when we say the word sojo, is we, what we mean. Where is your motivation to sew and how can you get it back? Now I see this time and time again in myself, I see it in my students at Vintage Sewing School, I see it here on YouTube, I see it in social media, I see it in my friends, everywhere. We all experience this in that you just lose that spark, that motivation, that joy that we get. Where did it go? It's about that spark, that feeling inside that gets you motivated and inspired and that zest and that spark that you just can't stop that's, that keeps you up until midnight sewing. That is what we're talking about. How do you get that back? I have seven methods for you of ways and of course uh, there is no one way and it will really depend on you and your personality. So I definitely recommend taking a look at yourself and knowing what kind of methods might work for you and you personally because it's always going to be different. These are based on my own personal experience and what I see work for all my students in Vintage Sewing School and everywhere. So I'm sure one of these or a combination will help you. The first one is to just allow yourself time. Really, sometimes we just need a break. Sewing is our hobby. Uh, sometimes we get so caught up in trying to uh, be productive and trying to think that we should be sewing things. When we bought all that fabric and have all those patterns, we should be sewing and we should be doing this. And it just becomes very unmotivating to actually do something when you put all of those pressures on yourself. So I say just absolutely block off time that you are not sewing, be it, I'm not going to sew this week. I'm not going to sew for a month. Just give yourself time that you're allowed to not sew and it's okay. Just give yourself some time off. And I guarantee after that, we usually always feel more refreshed and inspired and motivated after a break of any kind. I recommend tidy and organize your sewing space. I recently just made a video series on this, very this. I did this to my entire room here is I uh, reorganized, tidied everything, my entire studio. Doesn't having a nice, tidy, clean workspace just motivate you to actually, like when you walk in and everything's in order, it's all put away, it's all in its place and it's ready for your next project. To me, that is so motivating to keep going because if I walk into it and it is a disaster, a mess, I am so unmotivated to do anything. I know a lot of you are the same. So a good tidy and organize of your sewing space with whatever that space is, is always a big kick for the motivation factor, I think. And I've linked all of the videos down below if you want uh, some tips on organizing and tidying your own sewing space. The next is immerse yourself in what inspired you to sew in the first place. Immerse yourself in inspiration. So there's a reason that you might have started to sew. You probably want your own clothing and there's different reasons why. So immerse yourself. What inspires you? Be it go to museums, maybe just start making up a hundred Pinterest boards with all the fashion that you love and start collating it all. Watch movies with fashion that you love. 
uh, YouTube videos here of other creators crafting and making something. Maybe it's historical fashion uh, like me. Look for all these references and just allow yourself time to be inspired. And very importantly, now collect all this inspiration that got your juices going for sewing in the first place and put it somewhere where you can see it. So put it next to your sewing room in your uh, somewhere where you see it all the time or can flick through. Make sure it's somewhere you can see so you can continuously be inspired by the fashion that that maybe probably got you thinking that you want to uh, sew in the first place because I always find when like motivation starts from inspiration you want to be pulled towards something not being pushed and that you're being pulled and drawn towards the inspiration now inspiration is absolutely zero good without a plan and this is my next one is to make a plan so actually once you're inspired you need to make a plan i actually get really motivated by having the whole project plan out in front of me and all listed it's very motivating because sort of it's really easy to get started at that point. So make yourself a plan. So sketch out your uh, design that you're going to make of your garments. Pick the fabric, pick the trims, work out the order of construction and the chunks of like the process along the way. What are the chunks of construction you're going to do? Plan when you're going to wear it or plan if there are different skills that you need to learn for this. Plan it all out and write it down and put in stages the different the different stages of the process that you'll do and put it on paper. I promise you create a little binder, your own sewing journal, having it on paper for me to flick through uh, is just very, very motivating. Make your plan because it's so easy to be, you've got it all on paper then. It's really easy to get motivated and get started because it's all there for you. Pick a date that you're going to wear your item right nothing motivates uh, at least some of us more than a deadline so even if it is just a weekend that you're not doing much um, but something in particular maybe it's even a zoom call party that you're going to it doesn't even have to be a big event but pick a date that you're going to wear your item because it's very motivating when you have a deadline in place to actually get the things done. Now, of course, this is the opposite for some people that would be absolutely detrimental. So that really comes into knowing yourself and what motivates you. But I know a deadline is a big motivator for a lot of us. So pick a date, visualize the end result, the end garment. Now, I know this is probably going to be a little bit woo woo for some of you, but others, this will be right on point. So just bear with me. Uh, visualize where are you going to be at the end let yourself immerse yourself in that vision of the end so sit somewhere quiet somewhere you feel comfortable close your eyes and just think about the end garment that you're going to make see it in your mind imagine yourself twirling in it how does the fabric feel on your body have a look at the seams on the inside and the beautiful crafted seams and the finishes that you have hear those people saying wow that looks amazing get the feeling that it feels when you're finished that project and now this could be the project now or the project that you'll make in six months, a year, 10 years, whenever your skills maybe are at the level that you want and that you're, you're achieving for. Imagine that when you're at that level, what that garment looks like and get that feeling that inside of how great that will be. And then very importantly, that might not be the project that you're working on right now. That doesn't matter. Just remember then is to then remember that every step you're taking now, every right thing, every wrong thing that you do, is getting you to that point. It is the journey. The sooner you make those 10,000 mistakes that you need to make to get to that point, the sooner you'll be there, I promise you. So it is part of the process. Just sit down and imagine, visualize that end uh, skill level that you're at, that end garment, whatever it needs to be for you, and then work on your project. For me, that really does give me the motivation when you can really get in the shoes of that end result. And the next is prepare and remove the barriers. So sometimes we're very unmotivated because it feels like there are heaps of things stopping us from getting us going and it's very unmotivating. I actually made a video here recently about uh, removing barriers to sewing. So do check that out. I'll link it all down below. But basically, maybe spend like 10 minutes the day before you want to start sewing. Just spend 10 minutes of preparing and removing barriers. So whether you need to get out your project, get your sewing machine set up ready, uh, re revise what step that you're on to, what is the next step, go over the instructions. 
just prepare whatever the barriers that kind of you think, oh, I have to do this before I could get going, remove those the day before you start sewing. It's very motivating when you don't, it's all free, right? Your project is all there, ready to go. It's very motivating to get started when it's already ready for you and those barriers are like not there anymore. And if all else fails to get motivation, just go to your stash, your fabric stash, your pattern stash, whatever stash is your favorite that you've got and just peruse through because, oh, isn't that just so motivating when you see all of those fabrics and you touch and you feel them and you look at your patterns and you think, oh, what will I make next? It's fail safe way. <laughs> I would definitely want to hear from you below. Tell us what, what is like your biggest, how do you get your sojo back when you've lost it? What are the techniques you like to use? Remember to read all those comments and like the ones that you find enjoyable because it helps us all uh, share our information of sewing and we we'll all um, get better and share our tips. That's what we're here for in this community. And I thank you always. Thank you for watching. And until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. Bye.